Now, let's join course designer Doug Carrick and Brad Ewart on the first tee. Doug Carrick, you've built 30 golf courses all around the world. I've played some of them. They're outstanding. Now today we're here at the Ridge Course at Predator Ridge. I'm looking forward to this course today. Brad, it's great to have you here to play the Ridge Course today. We've got a beautiful day. The key is just keep it in the fairway, out of the bunkers and out of the long stuff. Hit the fairway, hit the green, knock it in. Sounds just, easy. Just the way the designer meant it to be played. Well, you're the designer, Doug. Please hit away. Thanks, Brad. Oh, right down the middle. Oh, a little left. Not too bad. Okay, hit the fairway. Hit the green, knock it in. Step one is hit the fairway. A little to the right. Kick down. Oh, got the designer's bounce. There were a lot of challenges in the initial parts of the project, you know, figuring out how to utilize the land. There was not only the component of the golf course, but the residential community as well, and figuring out how the two could be integrated and still come out with a very good golf course. And there were really three components to the layout, I think. There was the existing Peregrine 9, which was rebuilt, and a couple of holes were redesigned to make them a little more playable. But certainly the, uh, the elevation change and the rugged uh, rock outcrops was a challenge to keep it within budget and create a reasonable golf course. What a beautiful location. Here the ridge course built on hilly mountainous terrain overlooking Okanagan Lake. What a beautiful setting. Oh, fantastic uh, canvas to build a golf course on here, Brad. But, uh, you know, this kind of landscape uh, is a designer's dream, but it also presents a lot of challenges in building the course with some of the uh, elevation changes and the rugged topography. And, and that's your challenge as an architect and a designer to get it right. Take it through the routing, take it through the topographical changes, and, and then create a golf course that works. And what we're looking at down here right now, Doug, this is beautiful. What a gorgeous setting. It is a beautiful setting, and uh, I think one of the unique things here at Predator Ridge is you get different landscape settings throughout the golf course. You start out in some open grasslands that's typical of the Okanagan Valley, and then you go in through some wooded valleys where it's a little more enclosed, and then you come out to the ridge here, which is the name of the golf course, and you get this panoramic view of uh, Lake Okanagan. And then you go down into the lower parts of the property and you're surrounded by these beautiful rock outcroppings. So it's quite a nice variety of landscape settings for the golf course. And, and you talk about the dramatic granite rock outcroppings and you've used those, integrated them into your design. That's correct. Uh, well, obviously it's very difficult to move these granite outcroppings uh, and we felt that it's kind of a unique feature here in the Okanagan Valley and thought it would be a nice thing to frame some of the holes and you know, create some of the strategy around some of the rock outcroppings on the golf course. Places like the sixth hole, and that was a key area for the rooting of the golf course because there weren't too many options of how to get down to the lower section of the property. There was a narrow crevice that I noticed in the uh, topography maps and I thought, well, that looks like a spot we can take a tee shot down through this crevice and get to the lower portion of the property. And it widens out. Yeah, it's a bit of an illusion. I guess when you're on the tee, you know, you feel very confined and there's actually a lot more room than, than you anticipate, which I think is one of the interesting things about the hole. It kind of plays with your mind a little bit. Well, we look at it now, the finished product, it's beautiful, but it wasn't always like this. No, uh, this was pretty heavily forested terrain back in here, so we uh, spent a lot of time in the bush wandering around and trying to figure out where we were, looking at topography maps, and, uh, you know, gradually open it up, and, uh, you know, so that you can see where the, where the golf holes are going to fit into the landscape, and, and that's where really when you fine-tune the design of the golf course is, you know, during the clearing stages and moving things around just so it fits into the landscape naturally. You want to move as the minimal amount of earth that you can, but you have to move some. Exactly. You know, everything isn't perfect for a golf course. Uh, there were some holes that were a little more work than others. Some laid into the natural landscape with very little manipulation. Probably the most difficult hole is in the background here, number 11, a par 5, that uh, was quite rugged from tee to green, so we had to do some blasting there to create a playable fairway. 
and you've put a lot of, let's call it containment in your fairways and around your green where the ball has a chance to not bounce out of bounds but bounce back into play. Exactly. Well, that, that has a lot to do, again, with the rooting of the golf course and trying to work with the natural landscape and rooting some of the holes through the valleys where if it's an errant shot, it hits a slope and bounces back towards the fairway. You know, you study the topography maps, you look at areas and you, vi you sort of visualize in your mind that, oh, I bet this is really interesting. It, you know, you look at the contours and you say, that looks like a dramatic feature there that could be interesting to incorporate into the course. And then when you get out on the site and you see what that's actually like, many times it's much more dramatic than you envision in your mind. And that's, that's the exciting part of the process. There are times that you as the designer have challenged the golfer with either bunkering or rock outcroppings, but once you play the hole you realize there's quite a bit of room there. There is, it's a little deceiving I think. The scale is so big out here, the landscape is so large that uh, you have these massive landforms and it, it perhaps appears a little tighter than it actually is when you play the golf hole. And with the, not really the elevation, but the, the climate that we're in, the ground is firm, you're going to get a lot of roll, especially during the mid-season. Yeah, it's a nice dry climate here in the summer in the Okanagan. You know, with some of the, the slopes and the elevated tees, you know, I think golfers will really enjoy some of the extra distance they may get on their tee shots. Well, I'm thoroughly enjoying this tour you've taken me on so far. We've got lots more to see. Let's head back out on the golf course. Okay, Brad. So far, so good. These holes have been outstanding. And I'm going to have to sink this putt just to keep close to you in our match and earn myself a hot dog. Get in there. Oh, Ooh. good try. Slips it by. Okay. That's good, Brad. The match is on. Doug, I'm getting a little hungry, feeling a little peckish. So we take a break? Sounds good. A light lunch fresh fruit, and a glass of wine are offered at the Outlook Cabin that serves as a welcome refreshment stop for golfers, hikers, and cyclists touring the resort. Doug, as I travel the world as a golf writer, I'm often asked to rank the golf courses. So of course, when I get to a new golf course, first I look at the design, the condition of the golf course, the aesthetics. All of those are important, but one of the most important things for a golfer is the hot dog. And here we have the Predator Ridge Dog, and we have executive chef Jeff O'Neill. Jeff, how you doing? Great, how are you? Pretty good. Now, Jeff, is it is it just perfect? Perfect. It's the best hot dog in any golf course. Best hot Okay, well, we'll soon find out. Well, it's off to a good start. It's barbecue. Now for the real proof are the condiments. And do you have all the right ingredients? The wiener's important, but so are the rest of the stuff. Oh, it looks like we're off to a good start. Okay, we got to get a little ketchup in there. That's important. Got to have ketchup. Oh, mayonnaise. Gotta have mayonnaise. What's a hot dog without mustard? Sure, you gotta have mustard. Not big honking chunks, but nicely, finely diced onions so they don't get stuck in your teeth on the back nine. Oh yeah, we got cheese. The jalapenos, we got them. We got them, if it tastes good, this wiener could be the best hot dog in Canada. Let's see. Okay, Doug, it looks like they've got it all. Jalapenos, chopped onions, the cheese. Well, the proof is in the dog. Whoa, hey, look who's here, Hal Quinn. Hey, Hal, good to see you. Good to see you, Bradley. Doug? Hey, Hal. Great to see you, Hal, and welcome to Predator Ridge. Thank you very much. I'm really enjoying the golf course. Great. Looks like you're enjoying a hot dog. Well, we were a little hungry. We're just making the turn at 12. You know how important it is the hot dog isn't around the golf, so I suggest you try the dog. Join us in the 19th hole for a drink afterwards, will you? That'd be terrific. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Look forward to it. Hey Jennifer, I hear the hot dogs are terrific. I think I'll have one. Oh, hey Doug, that hot dog was pretty good. Now I have enough energy to get through the back nine and the rating of this golf course just went up. There we go. Good drive, Brad. Oh. Another good par five here. Perfect. So when you're not designing golf courses, you're out playing, okay. hitting it pure like that, <laughs> swinging pure like that. You just make the game look so easy. Do you design it, golf courses to suit your game? Exactly. Well done. I gotta win some money. <laughs> well done. Man plays tough.
In 2010, the Ridge Course, designed by Doug Carrick, was named the best new golf course in Canada by Score Golf Magazine. Good, Brad. Right at it. Yeah. There we go. Putting for birdie. Putting for birdie. I like that. Oh, there we go. Drawn back into the pin. Be the right club. Catch it. There we go. Well, Doug, you've been playing well. Knock this in for two. Has he done it? Has he done it? Oh, oh a little low. A little, little low, low, Brad. Tap that in. Never complain about a par if you can make this one. Never a doubt. Easy par. I'll and always take par. Never complain about a par. Yeah. Now, Doug, well, what a great little par three this is here, number 15. And I remember this hole from the old course from before. And what you've done is you've built a number of new holes, but here we get to a redesign of the closing four. Right. We're back on the original Peregrine 9 here, Brad. and. Uh, we did, uh, we did a lot of work on the, uh, the original Peregrine 9, basically rebuilt the golf course from tee to green to try and make it a little more friendly, a little more playable, address some of the drainage issues and, and other uh, soil issues that they had on the golf course. Uh, so we started here really back on the Peregrine 9 with the 15th hole. We raised the tee about six feet to give you a better look over the water move the green away from some of the houses to protect them a little more and uh, you know basically tried to make the greens a little more gentle. Uh, and, and this lake, Birdie Lake, still comes into play. Birdie Lake still comes into play and you know especially with some of the front pin positions on this green. And then we move on from here to number 16, a little dog leg left par four. Again right. the same routing but a different hole. Yeah a different hole. One of the things we did on that hole was uh, we eliminated the creek that ran in front of the green to make it more of an uh, enticement to try and drive the green for a long driver, make it a drivable par four, or you can lay up to the right and uh, you know have a short pitch shot into the green, but the, the left pin positions there can make it quite a challenge. Because then the water left of the pin comes into play. Exactly, and I think for uh, you know a good uh, player who hits the ball long, can have a go at the green, but they better be straight. Number 17, another good, strong par four, framed by bunkers right side, water up the left side, a very good, strong finishing hole. Yeah, actually the last two holes are really strong par fours uh, to finish the golf course. Number 17, we uh, filled in a portion of the lake to try and make the driving area a little bit wider, and we widened the approach into the green, but it's now a par four and not a short five as it once was. It's a long par four, and I came in with a hybrid coming in, and it gives you, the ball will roll in, and, and the green accepts a shot well. That's right, we tried to make the green entrances open so that uh, there was always the option to roll the ball onto the green, and if you want to make it difficult, you can tuck the pin in the back left corner there and for a good player he's going to have to work the ball into the pin. And then the final hole number 18. Well save the best for last or save a good test for last. 18 is a very strong finishing hole par 4 probably about 450 to 60 yards from the back tee and uh, what we did there was we raised the fairway and lowered the green because it was a severe uphill shot uh, before so we wanted to try and equalize that elevation change and make the green a little bit flatter so that it was a little more friendly for the finishing hole. Well we got a few more holes to go Doug. You're, you're on your game. I'm doing my best. Well, you're playing well today. Brad. Let's see what's ahead. Okay. Well it's a very dramatic golf course with really three different landscape settings. Open rolling grasslands, wooded valleys, and then ridges where you get these fantastic panoramic views of Lake Okanagan and a lot of rock outcroppings. Take it. Yeah! Oh, Good oh, cut, done. Brad. I needed that for to the tie. To tie the match. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed Great that. Cut. Thank Me you too, so much. Brad. Thank you. Really enjoyed, enjoyed that. Enjoyed the day. Now, let's head up to the 19th hole. We've got a couple of friends to meet, talk about the day, and have a few refreshments. Sounds great. 